Welcome back, everybody. As you may see, there are two me's on your screen, and this is because I have already played this educational Smurf game, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a spoiler alert. Every time I've played support in these educational Smurf lobbies, it's a bit of a stomp. So we're trying something a little bit different today, and I am going to watch the game back and talk to you guys about crucial moments in the game that I think there's easy mistakes for these players to be fixing, and kind of elaborate on some of the things that I was talking about being mistakes during the game. You gotta be careful about taking these watchers because the opponent can see through fog that you took them. So the first mistake of this replay so far is that that was actually fixed in a sub patch. So BSJ, you're a noob. Why are you telling people wrong things? They can only see that the enemy has the watcher after they themselves see the watcher is captured. We're gonna wait on this hill. Got 35 seconds. Super being chill. We're probably taking stun, but the wave of terror armor reduction is kind of juicy looking here. Problem with Vengeance, she's a tad slow. So she's not like certain supports that can get away with like rushing support items as well, but I'm gonna try it anyways. Like I'm gonna go medallion before boots. At least I'm saying that now, but, you know, that could change. There's a lot that could happen between now and minute three when I get my, or minute six when I get my medallion, right? Fimber mid, Phantom Lancer running top. Looks like they were making a similar move. We see a Blood Grenade and a Blightstone on the Hoodwink. Primal Beast offlane. He's got 69 damage. That's very nice. We're going to go ahead and block this. And then we're going to... We're actually not going to buy that stick. Really good damage there. I'm going to get some damage on this Primal. Okay, he's going to do that. The only reason I was willing to go on Primal is because Hoodwink used her W, so they had no way of actually catching us. So notice how I said I went on the primal once the hoodwink had casted her spell. And now it's the exact opposite, right? Where primal has now casted his only spell because he's level one. And this is an example where your aggression and passivity should be timed around the power of your teammate in lane because otherwise you're going to have these moments where the opponent just goes on you and you're like, what do I do? My teammate can't help me. I guess I'm just dead. So the hoodwink's going to make the exact same mistake as the Primal just did by letting us go on him, as I'm perfectly fine trading with Hoodwink here because of the fact that Primal used his spell. Nice, we got him. Okay, we need to do this, then this, then this, then this. We have a pole camp, then this. We're gonna replenish our resources as quick as possible, get the pull off since we're low. So as I pause right here, a big mistake that people are making in these games continuously is they're not blocking the pole camp. So people, this small camp on both Dire and Radiant is super easy to pull right now, and it is absolutely essential that you block it. Gonna get this range creep deny. Actually, didn't matter if we denied it or not because they're not over here. How much is this? Ten percent? Nah, it's too value, I think, to go the wave of care. That fucking sixty-one damage though. It might have even been worth just going crown there, because it's 8 damage. I'm trying to give my guy solo XP. So he didn't do a good job of keeping lane equilibrium, which sucks. He was, like, supposed to keep it outside of tower range so that it doesn't do what it's doing right now. She hasn't dewarded the pull. Lane's not really where I want it, but I also feel like my Bloodseeker's kind of chilling. So I'm going to protect my pull a bit. And then look to go. Yeah, Hoodwing's over here, so I'm not too concerned. We're just gonna, as long as our Bloodseeker's getting 1v1, he's a pretty good 1v1 carry, so. Okay. Primal Beast used his charge earlier, that's why we're fighting this guy. Probably could have killed the Hoodwings there. I don't like this because we're missing a bunch of CS on our tower, so if my carry's gonna miss CS, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take that one from him. We're actually gonna go the crown first. 
But we can posture and threaten this hoodwink. He's gonna get the Lotus though. So this example of a spell usage by Hoodwink is not good because the wave is pushing into them. So if we posture aggressively at them, if they have an equal amount of creeps or the lane is going to push towards us, it's their job to fight back because otherwise they're missing a bunch of creeps. But since we have a bunch of creeps and they have two creeps, that means none of our creeps are going to die. So if they don't fight us, they're not giving up anything other than us getting two last hits. And so by casting spells in this circumstance, you end up casting them and then retreating. Notice how every time I've stunned the Hoodwink, I'm following it up with like two or three right clicks because we're it's an appropriate time to be aggressive. You never want to be casting your spells and then just retreating. So notice how because they have so few creeps, deny some creeps, like they don't actually miss anything by... Don't letting us stun just unless stu our... like walk up in there. We're not afraid of us getting gone on, which they haven't used any of their spells. Trying to get another pull off, kind of abusing this. I'm happy to get the single pulls in this situation because I want to help my Bloodseeker soonish, or like I pull the full wave, but I also want to kill the camp for the XP. Getting a little greedy, you know? Getting a little greedy. I'm gonna go help him here because it looks like nope, they're not going on him. I was ready though. We denied two creeps. And they don't have a pull. It's kind of a noob of this hoodwink to not have a pull. The time has come. Honestly, I'm freaking leveling my aura. Just making sure I'm not a liability here, because Bloodseeker used his W. Similar to how I was being aggressive when my opponents use their spells, I'm being passive when my carry uses his. I'm just gonna... I shouldn't have actually hit those range. That was pretty noob. Dude, I hit hard. Look at this shit. Going so whenever the opponent casts a bunch of spells like this, you have two ways to punish. The best two ways to punish are to either go on them because they don't have spells, or in this case where my spells are kind of on cooldown and they don't have spells but mine will be up sooner, the best thing we can do is make as many creeps die as possible while their spells are on cooldown. It's kind of this idea that the creeps dying are important timers in the lane. So if you can make as many die when the opponent's weak and make as few die when they're strong, that's ideal. So you're gonna see here that because he casts his spells and I can't punish him with my spells, okay. that I'm going to immediately start denying creeps. And this is something I do not see you guys do. He has no charge. So we're gonna go on him here if he goes to that creep. Normally, if we get a kill like that, we would buy our Bloodseeker Tangos, but, or like our carry Tangos. But Bloodseeker doesn't really need Tangos, because he's got his passive. We're going to hope our Bloodseeker gets the kill. Nice. Oh, he's fucking chunking him. Okay, so we're going to buy, I guess, a Salve and some Tangos. We don't need another Sentry, actually. The ward. And we're gonna go back and pull. We're gonna check out mid what's going on here. So in this case, I liked a single pull. And if I had more resources, I could go top. But I actually, li I, I kind of like the idea of going top here because my Bloodseeker is farming the pull. Yeah, this is a perfect Twin Gate opportunity. I'm gonna have my resources go there. If you ever single pull like this at five minutes or so, it's like a perfect time to Twin Gate it up. Give him a good old flank. So one thing that this PL did is that you may not see this as much in your pubs right now because it takes usually lower MMR players a bit of time to catch up to like new moves that people are making. But I want you guys to think that this area down here is actually safer than this area now because of this exact reason. So the PL was technically out of position in the sense that he was hanging out on this side of the wave rather than down here. And that's where if you're gonna get ganked by a support, it's coming up from there. Because in the past, it would be a support TPing to this tower and then coming from the same direction, which would make this better. But now it's much more likely to be exactly this. And then we go back bottom. Our courier is confused though. We could have maybe gone mid to help secure rune there. 
But we're just gonna be a menace on the map. I like maxing stun. I also don't mind moving around the map at night. That's part of why you go at five minutes, because you get that extra 30 move speed. I'm gonna pull this wave. It's a good camp to pull. This is a piercing damage camp. Which means that it will probably kill our creep wave. Or, like, it kills more of our creep wave than most of the other small camps. I'm trying to get the denies. I'm ready to help my Bloodseeker if they go on him. So that pull is absolutely crucial, because it puts your carry in a safe spot in lane. It's like mid laners ganking. We're gonna run over to our Bloodseeker here. Okay. Rough life out there, boys. Primal. I'll take the last hit because I need some items too. So in this case, way things are going, I'm actually gonna buy boots windlace. Just based on what's happening. I'm moving around a lot. Our lane bottom is like super one. We're chilling. So whenever you go mid, it's really nice to just see if they have a ward. I also have a salve, so I don't really mind taking this damage. I'm going to kind of chad this guy up. Oh, they don't have a ward that we can see. And by ourselves... Actually, three blood grenades. That seems really nice. Because of how much we're moving. And a sentry. So we're just walking towards top now, because bottom's like whatever. We're going to go back towards mid, because there's a rune, and I'm just busy thinking about a lot of things I'm not used to thinking about. So in this case, Ember, as a hero, is insanely good at getting runes because he can lay a remnant at one rune and then walk to the other. And this is an example where in my bracket, the mids, they're at the runes at eight minutes flat, right? They are there literally spam, ready to, ready to pick up the rune. But you're noticing that this I'll Ember sure is going to be a few seconds rune. late to the rune, as you see here, and then I'm just going to take it from him, which is something that a Ven should never be able to do to an Ember. Actually, Necro doesn't need runes, so... Looks like Jakiro doesn't... Looks like they do not have vision of top rune. So suddenly, even though we're up 7-0 to and it kind of makes sense that we should have momentum in the mid lane, notice how because Jakiro is like completely taken out of the fight because he's so low, the momentum went in our favor. We had three heroes dealing damage, and they had one hero retreating and the other two chucking spells at us. So that being late to the rune alone gave us all of the momentum in this circumstance, which is now causing this. So I want you guys to see how big of a difference it is that you guys miss these little timings when it comes to these crucial objectives on the map. We're gonna right click this guy down. Every educational smurf game that I play on this channel is a lobby of volunteers from the BSJ community that are allowing themselves to be smurfed on for your own educational purposes. If you guys would like to take part in these lobbies, make sure to join the Discord link below. And if you'd like a guaranteed spot, make sure you sign up at patreon.com slash BSJ gaming for the starters or deluxe package. No! Okay. How did nobody die there? Dude, how did nobody die? Well, I have, like, boots delivered to me, and I have, like, a fucking sh I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I probably had some item mismanagement there. So, Teal's only level 5. We are going to actually give this guy two mangoes so he can help us. And we're gonna pressure this PL because he's alone. And he's level 5. I'm gonna pressure this tower. Can't help a guy that's fucking useless with no mana, so we're gonna pressure this tower. Wherever this PL is, probably back here, right? Yeah, he's back here. Give him a good old run at him play. The blood grenade was to make him doppel. 
Gonna run back towards mid now. Our bristle's kind of chill. Need to, we don't really kill buildings with our builds, so... Actually, I, don't, I can't run that way. I wanted to go this way, but that's old map. Still getting used to that. Okay, we'll see what's going on with Bloods here. We don't have a TP, though. We'd have to go through the Twin Gate, but since it's rune spawning, we're prioritizing that. We definitely should have gotten Wisdom Rune earlier. I'm still not fully a, used to playing support. I'm just gonna bully this guy off the creep wave. Guy has Reapers, and he's not casting it. Please cast Reapers. Thank you. Okay, this freaking Necro is a... Whip! It's fine. Get back! You're full HP, man! What's going on down here? Okay, we're super overreacting. I'm going to TP top and really hope, cross my fingers, that they did not pick this up. <sighs> nice, everyone's as bad as I am. <sighs> Gonna go straight back to mid. I am not concerned with that fight. This is me time now as support. Yes. Gonna stack some camps while we're on our way to mid. I am there. Gonna check for runes again. They're not runes, excuse me, wards. I can say, this hero feels like it hits harder, I will say. I'm a very big, I'm a very avid bench support enjoyer. Is that an ob? No, that's a sentry. No ops here. Just clearing the wave while we got some me time. Uh, we need to make sure we get another TP and a clarity. Where's PL at? Maybe in the top corner of the map. Oh, I didn't get the next creep boy. That was my intent with that W. Take a neutral item too. I mean, we're just pushing the mid lane, farming as a support, because we have a high impact item coming out here. Real to me. Come on! Oh my god, I thought I had him. I actually thought I had him. Nobody with a TP, huh? I guess it's a 2k average. I shouldn't expect a sort of TP there. If I had my if I had all my items, I would have killed him for sure. Faded brooch is pretty nice. Spark of Courage is kind of nice, too. I'm actually kind of down for the Spark of Courage. Fate of Brooch just seems too good, though. Yeah, Fate of Brooch is just so nice on supports. I mean, it's so nice on everybody. Play a smoke, too. I'm going to sell the Tangos. I'm going to pressure mid. We're busy feeding the game away to the one guy that's going to beat our team. That's all we're busy doing. Okay, I mean, we know they have a ward there, but it's really hard to de-ward. I mean, at least our team has pinged it like four times. But since they're all there, it's like impossible to de-ward. Maybe we should have smoked. Still really strong, but I can't really do anything. Running bottom to farm. I feel like the problem with this is we have a uh, necro mid. Instead of, like, a spirit. So we can't really do much on the map. So that's why I feel like I'm supposed to farm more. Am I getting charged? Holy shit, that guy could have killed me if he didn't fuck that up. The whole team's always reacting. Okay, so this guy has a ward. That was with the hate. It's, it's up here, right? Funny thing is, I was thinking about checking that, but I just honestly didn't think they'd have a ward there. Now I don't have any sentries. I only bought tranquils because I kept having health issues. That's why I bought tranquils. I'm also planning on buying drums, so... It's not like that crazy. We basically have no playmakers, so it's kind of hard to make plays. Makes sense. We're full mana, so we're fine to use a stun to get a last hit. Or, like, clear away faster. Um, gonna wait for another sentry to roll out. I 
I feel like whenever I play these low MMR smurf lobbies, and when I used to smurf in low MMR, you just have to farm more on support. Like, you just have to, because nobody's taking it. Just do a little stun damage to him. That's a major. That time around, he ran at me, like, way too aggressively. What Bloodseeker got? Pretty farmed. So, we got a bunch of open slots now. We're gonna go drums. So, what I would like to say to you guys is that this has always kind of been the case, that when you're losing, that you tend to either want to take advantageous fights, like 5-on-4, five 5-on-3, five or you want to gank, like 3-on-1, basically have the numbers always, because you're losing, you have lower net worth, in this case we're up 12-3, to three. or you just want to split up the map, like you just want to like dodge, okay? And a lot of this comes down to what the strengths of the opponents are, right? So if you look at our lineup, Necrophos and Bristle are both very tanky, slow heroes. So what that means is they lack stuns. Like, we only have Rupture and the two supports to kill people, and it will maybe kill one guy. And Bloodseeker still probably wants to be farming the majority of the game. So at the end of the day, our playmaking potential really isn't that great unless they fight into us. And since the map is so big, it's even easier to stagnate this portion of the game where you just don't fight them. And another thing is that if the team who's more powerful wants to fight or they want to control an area, the mid is by far the easiest area even after the patch because you can get here as long as you just TP to the mid tier one. And the enemy can TP to the mid tier two in this case. Like what I mean by this is pretty much anyone in the game can connect to mid. It's like if you take a fight on a side lane, it may be a bit more difficult to get there. So if you're wanting to play this split push game, since we have Br Bristleback and Necro and they're losing to us, then the last place that they should be with more than one hero is mid. Like the only hero that should go mid here is either Jakiro or Ember, simply just pushing out the lane, like Jakiro from long range or Ember with a remnant really far back. Just getting the XP, making sure we don't they don't take casual damage on their tower. But then that's the only resources they should be dedicating to mid. And what happens here is the enemy is losing really badly, and not only are they losing really badly, but they bring all of their heroes mid. So it's gonna be an honest fight because it's mid. I'm telling you that's how it works. So it's gonna be like a five on five, and they're just gonna get obliterated, oh, right? Links here. And we're just trying to secure the middle of the map now. We should feel pretty safe to deward this hill and buy another wind lace because wind laces are broken. You want to make sure you hit the enemy ward, you right click it instead of A click. Oh, we got a ward. Nice job, Wyvern, with the D ward. I actually don't know if that gives vision. Hey, <laughs> stayed. Lol. That yeah, must have been a misclick. Wasn't actually expecting that to work. We should have a ward for this, to be honest. So what I like about this smoke is that we had just TP bottom to kill PL. And whenever you TP to the side lane when you're winning, if possible, it's really good to just get like right back out of the map. Because notice how the opponent immediately feels safe to go hit mid tower. So this is a move that people in your bracket would never be ready for. It's even something it's hard to be ready for when you're in my bracket, because this was really quick. Because not only are we did we just show bottom but we smoked so we have bonus movement speed and we're just running straight mid 
right? So if you guys are a support and you see this opportunity where you got a kill and you didn't use any crucial cooldowns, in this case, rupture or swap, then this is a perfect move to just smoke and look for more. This is just to like shut down their push. Maybe I should be solar cresting my Bloodseeker instead of the enemy. We really don't want them to have wards mid, to be honest. I'm gonna check for high ground over there without having to walk up. Gonna buy ourselves that. We're just gonna keep running towards the team. Our build's like super nice for that. Necro, no ulti for a bit. So this whole fight in general makes absolutely no sense to me because there's no Wisdom Rune, there's no Tormentor, so there's nothing for us to be invading, which means it makes absolutely no sense for me to, for our team to be here in the first place. Like, why are we applying aggression over here? The map is so big right now that applying aggression has to have like a specific objective in mind because if you don't get that objective, then the enemy could just not be here. So this fight not only doesn't make sense because I have no idea why we're here, but I have no idea why they're fighting us. <laughs> like, why are they down 17 to 3 defending an area that has nothing? What I mean by this, if they see this, if they saw Necro bottom, why don't they just farm the entire top half of the map? So these are the type of fights that you need to help your team cautiously as a support. And if I'm a core, I'm just not here. What I'll do as a core in order to help cautiously is I'll generally walk away from something like this such that if it continues for a long time, I might TP to it. I don't want to TP away from this because that means I'm like giving up on it 100%. But I also don't want to sit here and join in. So it's kind of low skill on both sides. I don't know if that's real to be honest. It is. Ow. We don't want to stick so we don't have mana. Otherwise, he does more damage to us. God, nobody's fucking listening to my pings! Actually, so annoying. We have swap form. Like, if I'm Bloodseeker here, I would have just pushed mid lane and potentially rotate here. But I would never just walk to this fight because I want you guys to hear why this fight makes absolutely no sense to me, and that's what you should be thinking. Like, if you see your team fighting, you should ask yourself, is there a reason that they would be there? Is there something good that could happen there? Do we have some, like, amazing timing? Is there, like, amazing objective to get here? And the answer is no, then don't just go. That's you blindly following your teammates. And if you blindly follow teammates' decision-making in your bracket, that's where you'll stay. Whatever. I mean, I'm purposely not using voice comms in my educational smurf lobbies. But I really wish people would kill the real PL there. Gotta be careful, because they're all gonna come here now, because I just showed in, like, a very aggressive position. We're not doing a good job with the Wisdom Runes. I'm gonna make sure I'm there for the 21-minute one. I'm just gonna act like I'm in my own game, and somebody picked up the Wisdom Rune. I don't know what my team's exactly doing on the map, to be honest. But we don't really have wards, except for bottom. I guess I'm gonna ward here. Really weird to ward this patch. I, I like I haven't played enough support to get in the habit of it yet. I mean, I'm just like when in doubt, I'm just farming. When in doubt, in the lower brackets, if you don't see a play, just farm. Our Bloodseeker's got his BKB. He's farming a stack. We've got our drums. Buy a smoke because we want to make a play. They warded mid. Save my Bloodseeker if I have to. Bringing my item.
So this mistake right here is actually the exact same as before, where we talked about the opponent for some reason has three or four heroes in the mid lane. They should just be split up. There's absolutely no reason to put most of your resources in the lane that the entire enemy team can easily access. Like, I don't even think we should be here because there's 21 minute wisdom runes coming out. So there is like a relevant objective. We could also Roche. So there's like a bunch of relevant objectives on the side of the map. And so there's a bunch of stuff we could be doing and there's nothing they should give a shit about here. So once again, another thing where I'm just like, well, I'm, I'm gonna follow my cores around and solo crest them and press drums, but I want you to see how this also makes no sense. I have to TP out or I fucking die. Honestly, maybe I was supposed to cancel the TP afterwards, but PL was like pretty hard committed on to me and nobody on my team was helping, so. It's not like their fault, I just noticed they're not helping. Maybe this is a feed though. Necro needs to keep healing. I don't really check my teammates' items as much as I should. Got a kill, very good. Uh oh, we said we were gonna check Wisdom Rune. It's a dart. I said I was gonna check it, but then a fight happened. Hard to force this fight. I really hate that my team's like randomly five manning and I Okay. So once again. It's the same idea. When I'm in the game, it's really hard for me to articulate what I mean by randomly. But why, right? When you guys are making your plays, when you notice a lot of heroes on your team or the opponent team in the same area, you just see like one team is grouped up. The first question you should ask yourself is what are we trying to accomplish here? Or, and if it's the case of the enemy team, what are we afraid that they could accomplish here? Could they Roche? Could they take a tower? And there's usually a pretty straightforward answer in Dota right now. Like your first thing is to be, where are they on the map? And what is the time? That is what we should check. So right now it's 22 minutes, no wisdom rune. We theoretically could take their tormentor, but like the thing about this play is unless the opponent just walks into us, it's not a great play, right? Like they could just be farming literally all of this and like, Shutting the enemy team down is not really a thing anymore because in the past, say you took their triangle, they'd have like five jungle camps, but now they have like 11 jungle camps. So even if we invade one part of their area, if we're not taking a specific objective, there's no reason to actually invade because there's no like constricting their farm. There's no cutting them off from resources in this current patch. So I see this and I'm just like random. I, I'm just leaving. Plays like garbage. Okay, so there were two wisdom rooms here. I am super high level now. I mean, the reason- I just refuse to look at this and then look at mid lane, which you can see is also a big creep wave in the opponent's favor, and then like sit in an irrelevant area and take a fight. So like, I personally don't even think the opponent should be fighting. It's not like they saw me TP out. It's not like they know they have advantageous numbers. They're just choosing to take a fight when they're down 21 to five in an area that doesn't matter. Why I hate this is because we're like not farming. They're like somebody on their team should already be here. It should be like an Ember, right? Like what's Ember actually afraid of? Like how is he gonna die when he's split pushing? Uh, it has to be like three or four heroes stunning, chain stunning him with Bloodseeker hitting him. That's the only way he dies. They could be farming, I have no idea. And uh, there's just like a huge creep wave here. Like it's just such a really low skill shit play. So whenever my team is doing low skill shit plays, I really advocate you guys do the same. I just do this. But we can go through the portal to come back. Don't encourage low skill shit plays, guys. This is fine though. Now that we pushed out the wave. Remember you can use lotuses on your teammates. I also have a lotus orb for myself. We have double safe supports, which is pretty nice. I can stun this guy right at the end. I can actually stun the Ember. Nice. Probably have a ward here if they're good. Nice. I feel like the only reliable way to D ward right now is like relevant team fight wards, you know? It's like the only thing. Wave of terror minus three? Dude, when did that happen? It's fucking broken. So instead of just everyone marching down a lane, I prefer efficiency. Like, I think you should not just leave creep waves unfarmed. Big no no. Strengthen that 
Oh, Shieldren's gone. Wait, what happened? Oh, it expired, maybe? So we're letting a PL take our tower. I'm so slow in these games. It's okay. I'll let him take the farm. Those are plays that, like, you want to make, but nobody's ready, so... What other, like, aura stat items can we go? Phylactery actually seems kind of nice. Not really a stat item, or like an aura item, though. We're gonna try it out. It's probably not the item, to be honest, but... You know, this... What, what else are these low MMR educational smurf lobbies for than experimentation? So in this specific case, our team has smoked. We have smoked from mid towards top. So when you see your team smoke and you're a core that's not in the smoke, it is absolutely essential that you either walk towards where they're smoking to. So in this case of Necro, he could do like a little this, or you TP to the side of the map they're smoking towards and connect, right? Basically you find a way to meet them somewhere near the fight because your team is prepping a fight and in this case we chose Roche like we said we're smoking for Roche which means the fight that we want even if the fight doesn't happen we're going to go to an objective and that's right here on the map so in this case if I were Necro instead of walking back to bottom lane I would TP to top lane look to push out this creep wave and a fight happens up here I take it so you're going to see in a second that I get really annoyed and call it really bad that Necro is bottom and he has absolutely no reason to be there and we're now articulating right now, why this should have never happened in the first place, what well, you're about to watch. So in this type of spot, you want to do high ground wards. In this case, we see them bottom. My Necro's kind of just feeding. He's actually alive. So even though my Necro is really tanky here, even if he, like, thinks he's strong enough to survive four heroes. It's the same idea that we're winning the game, and it's our prerogative to continue moving the game forward, which means taking relevant objectives on the map, whether that's Towers or Tormentors or Roche. So, like, even though he could tank these heroes, he's making his team choose between a crucial objective, Roche, or helping him, which is not what we want to do. That's not at all the decision you want to be putting your team in. Because when you're winning, you should be making the opponent have tough decisions rather than your teammates have tough decisions. Uh, Wyvern is teeping. I mean, we're doing two different plays. I think my Necro's a noob, so we're gonna kill Rush. They're actually, <laughs> they're actually alive. I mean, I, he's a noob in like his map positioning is what I'm trying to say. Like his map positioning there doesn't do anything. The pills like killing all of our buildings is just really annoying. Maybe they rewarded this? Wait, no, they didn't. We had a century. At least they probably didn't. A lot of random stuff we can't really predict going on here. Dude. I don't think this guy's ever supposed to die to this, to be honest, but I'll we'll take it. Flactory seems pretty bad. I think I'd rather have, like, an Aether Lens or a Vlad. Vlad's doesn't give stats, but it does give more damage to our team. We're giving 28% damage right now. Vlad's would be pretty nice. Buffing up our carry, stunning the guy that's trying to stun him. Nice. 
I do feel like most of my impact in these games is to fix lanes and to win my carry his lane. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of voiceover from me here, elaborating on some of the stuff that I was talking about during the games. And hopefully you guys learn what to avoid doing because this is what defines you guys in the brackets that I am playing against. So today is 2,500 MMR, but anybody even remotely close to this or below can definitely learn from these mistakes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.